Welcome to this episode of Let's Rap. I am Derek Carr. I'm your host, and I have with me two of my favorite friends, uh, and that is in the person of Lisa Crutcher Therma. I messed that all up. Yes, okay. Crutcher Therma, <laughs> and then uh, Kimberly Wilson. Uh, these two ladies have been friends with me for over 20 plus years, and we have had yeah. a great friendship. So I decided what would be a great day to bring one of my sisters in who watches the show pretty frequently. Let her come on the show. Come Wasn't on it a good show. idea? Come Sometimes on. I get one. Sometimes I get one <laughs> every, every now and again. And so today we want to talk about how to deal with rejection. And rejection is something we all face in one form or another. And so let's wrap. Let's talk about it. So uh, rejection can be defined as the act of pushing someone or something away. One may experience rejection from one's family or origin, a friend or a romantic partner, and the resulting emotions can often be painful. Rejection can be experienced on a large scale or in small ways in everyday life. Uh, what's your thoughts over here? <laughs> right on the spot from the beginning. <laughs> yeah. um, actually, my thought when I, you sent me the outline last night, um, and I understood all of those points, but I started to think about when you reject something that you shouldn't reject. Mm. You reject something that's good for you. Yeah. There are people that reject Christ. Ah, okay. There's people that reject medical advice yes. that's good for them. There's people who reject, you know, if your best friend or your family member is giving you advice. So I started kind of thinking it from that aspect. So, because rejection can be a good thing because it'd be setting you up for, for something better in the future. Absolutely. But I think also you can reject something that can also move you backwards. See, that's why I like adding other people because mm -hmm. they always add another light. Yeah. Just, you can't just cut it off to what you think. You always got to put somebody else in, the, in it. And friends that love you. So you can't take Yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right. That's friends right. that love you, you have that's to right. take, be able that's to take right. that advice. So it's an interesting point because that's true. We do reject certain things. Why do we do that? I just, I don't know what that is. Why do we reject things? What just come to my mind thinking, why do we reject certain things? Because it's unfamiliar sometimes. Like, People trying to introduce you to something else. I remember Rev had said years ago that you always got to keep doing more, getting better, changing it up. And I'm thinking, why would you change it up? It's working like this. This is fine. <laughs> but right. no, That's you a do. Form you of have rejection. to. Yeah. It is because yeah. um, people get too set in their ways. Mm -hmm. Well, it's time to do something different. Mm -hmm. And Pastor, I mean, it's been proven time after time after time. You got to keep up. You got to keep doing new and better and trying different things and it's hard sometimes and like I said we set in our ways and it's familiar and that's comfortable absolutely you gotta get absolutely. out of that comfort zone and and one thing that I deal with that I, I know a lot of people when we when we get rejected Ooh. and how hard that is and the pain that we feel I remember being younger <laughs> and I remember <laughs> that first relationship and you know and she's like you know this is not working. I don't want to be with you no more. You just, it just hurts so hurt bad. Pain. It's like this pain and it's just, it just hurts. And you just can't describe it. You why just want to lay me? down. Why, why me? Is it something why I've me? done. It's yeah. something. Then we always do that. There's something wrong with me. There's mm -hmm. something wrong with me. And we always tend to look inward when someone rejects us. But in not all cases, is it that way? Sometimes people just don't like it. They don't like, they don't like you. I mean, right. we're not for everybody. I saw a shirt the other day and I started to order it. I'm not for everyone. Well, I'm, not. Yeah. I'm yeah. the one I say, shirt I saw that said, I'm the friend you have to tell your other friends about before they meet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's yeah. definitely that's, 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 that's definitely. Yeah. That's definitely uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is definitely some validity to that. Yeah. Um, when I say, I guess it's so hard to feel like, okay, so a lot of times we feel like, uh, so like I, I read this point, this is uh, written by Zero Dean. And he said that rejection is neither the, an, in, an indication of a value or talent. Remember that. If you believe in what you have to offer, then don't stop offering it simply because some of those you offer it to reject it. Many people are simply not very good at recognizing talent or value. It doesn't mean you won't eventually find an audience that will. So you can't get caught up if somebody yes. don't like you then somebody else might like you. Right. I mean, if you're one of your friends or just something's going on, it's not that they reject you totally, just I don't want to do nothing today. You know, mm -hmm. why do we take rejection so personal? Mm -hmm. What What is that about? Is there something in us? What What is it that makes us think that rejection is so bad? Because a lot of times, I, I think about my own personal situation. I'll never forget. Y'all know when y'all first met me, I was working at the Candy Club. And... <laughs> 
<laughs> I was working at the cable company. Y'all accused me of cutting people's cable off. That's a whole other story. story. So, That's another uh, show. That's another so show. <laughs> I worked at the cable company. I started there when I was 19. I worked there for like 14 years. It just, I was growing. I was nourishing. I was nurtured. I learned so many things. Um, I, I learned all my um, manage, managerial skills. Everything I, I learned was from insight. Mm-hmm. So I felt rejected in 2009 when we had like the wind storm and then we had an ice, ice storm like a year before and so we lost a lot of members and our um, customers and so in the midst of losing the customers they wanted to sell the company to another uh provider and so in order to be more attractive they had to kind of let people go so they did a huge riff so i was one of those people and i was like oh my god I've been here all this time and now I got rejected and I don't have a job. Now I'm laid off. Yeah, I got severance and I got unemployment things were in place, but I don't have a job. And I felt rejected. I felt despondent. I felt, I don't know what, I felt ashamed. I don't know what that was about, but I was laid off from this job. And I remember, I just, I I remember that too. I was just crying. I was upset. I didn't know what was going to happen. But then now I look at my situation. I wouldn't even be where I am now had I not been rejected at that point. So a lot of times rejection gives us tunnel vision. We can't see past what the situation we're in at that current moment, not knowing that God always has something better for you. Nine times out of 10, you're rejected from from something or someone. There's always something better for you. Yes. Always something better for you. Think about your past relationships. Yes. Before you met your husband. <laughs> oh, right. Uh, but no, I got to tell what comes to my go mind ahead, when you ahead. said that. Our pastor told us about the how, air traffic control. Right. right. And I was thinking, oh, uh, not traffic. It's four nine. The, Which one? The cleaner. Oh, yeah, the cleaner. Oh, the cleaner. Oh, four yeah, nine. Yeah, yeah. He had to do now, 408 time. times yeah. you don't get, you got yeah. rejected. And yet he pursued. He kept, yeah, yeah. you know, because that was his passion. And he didn't give up. Mm-hmm. And... He didn't change his product. Right. Just like you know, remember the guy I was dating, and he was Lisa. Why do you have to talk so much? Why is it that you have to be front and center stage? Or, and I, I'm thinking, gosh, maybe that's bad. And I'm trying to change. I did. I sat quiet for about 20 minutes. Didn't I? <laughs> but that's minutes. not me. It's not. You know. No. So, yeah. and he rejected me, but. My husband now, he knows I'm way out there. He doesn't care. He knows that's who I am. Yeah. Right. And so, you, you, like you said, you don't change yourself no. to yeah. come. You keep pursuing. Until that person on. comes along. Right. Can handle. And I thought about when you were talking about tunnel vision that Rev preached this summer one time. You know, like God is like the air traffic controller. You know, if I'm on my Delta flight, mm-hmm. I'm just on my one Delta mm-hmm. flight. Mm-hmm. But the air traffic controller is looking at Delta, United, yes. Southwest. Yes. Mm-hmm. They're looking at everything. They're looking at, you know, so right. a lot of times when you're in that situation and you're rejected, you're only in that moment. Oh, you can't, can't see 10 wow. years yeah. down the road. Wow. You know, because, you know, talking about past relationships, we're not mentioning any names, <laughs> but the one we can talk about it now and laugh. Right. Because right. there will be no stuff. Right. But, you know, right. <laughs> had that not ended the way it did in that moment, it was like, oh, it got awful. It was but awful. But now awful, I can look awful. back and I laugh and yeah. I'm like, oh my God, thank God. Because, I mean, I wouldn't have the child that I have. I wouldn't right. be in the Absolutely. place where I am now. Absolutely. So I'm like, woo, yeah. Thank so, you, Lord. Like, you just have, it's hard in that moment with, with, with anything. It's like that. In that, that moment, moment, you can't see past. So and Because we're not God. So we can, right. we only see in that moment. Nope. And our ways are not his ways. Mm-hmm. But it's so, it's hilarious how we do that. Uh, yeah. So, because I mean, I think about past relationships and I think about, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, just past relationships and then not to yeah. where you are now. Uh-huh. You know, and then right. you look back at someone and say, what was I thinking? thinking. Right. Lord, like, I'm so know, glad you, you right. rejected thank me. Thank you, Lord. And no we way. have to thank God that he does not give us everything we pray for. Oh, my say God. Yes. Yes. Thank God he does yes. not give us everything we pray yes. for. Because Some of them knows all right. Yeah. <laughs> Some of them <laughs> knows all right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we want a yes so bad. Yeah. But, but now you look back, you're like, hard oh, no. Lord, thank, thank you. you for that hard stop. <laughs> <laughs> when you were saying about the air traffic controller, I thought you were pastor told us about which I don't think I would have been able to relate to it had I not been out of the country and circling above Germany. We, I was there, we were there, but we couldn't land because of, like I said, it could have been other stuff that gone, but 
country you're going into has jurisdictions who could come in. Mm -hmm. So they were not allowing us. So we flew around just up top of the airport where I mean, I was in Germany for over an hour waiting oh, wow. for the clearance to land. land. And that's what Pastor said. Sometimes God has sent a holding pattern. That's it. Just you hold on. You hold on, because when he gets you down, you go down smooth sailing. Mm -hmm. But if you try to go down too fast, get in yourself and not heed his warnings and what he's yeah. saying to your heart, you could crash. Absolutely. You could crash. And so I understand. And it's okay to be in a holding pattern. It's okay. Because we hold on. He'll, he'll make give you he double will. for your trouble. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Bishop O.T. Allen said one of his uh, quotes that he had, he said, when you internalize rejection, you will eventually abandon yourself. So Ooh. what he was saying, when you live there and uh -huh. you constantly, I'm rejected, nobody likes me, nobody cares about me, and da 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 da. Rev said it best. He said, and I know we always quote our pastor, hey, we love our pastor. Right. He, uh -huh. he got good words. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Kevin W. Cosby yeah. gives us the I word. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. So, <laughs> sorry, not, not sorry. sorry. Yeah. So uh, when he gives us the word, and he used to say all the time, he would say, you know, a lot of times we get in a situation, we nurse it, we rehearse uh -huh. it, uh -huh. and uh, and we just keep going on and on and on. Mm. We just keep just nursing and just rehearsing it over and over when we should disperse it and uh, let God reverse it yeah. and do something different and just yeah. trust that God will make up the difference. So, okay, that person rejected you that time. So that person went for you. Right. Just move right. on. You'll find somebody else. Somebody loves you. Somebody will love you. Yes. And, and if it's the job, think about your work. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on, come on. You've applied God. for yeah. different jobs. I applied oh for God. five manager roles before I got the role that I got. But God ordained this say role. It, say mm -hmm. it. So all them times mm -hmm. I was trying, it wasn't for me. Mm -hmm. So he's like, okay, yeah, well, mm -hmm. don't stop. But just think if I stopped, just think if I gave up. And right. he said, no, right. keep going. And, keep and the going. man who keep kept going. rejecting me, I said, look, man, what's up? Right. You know, here I am. I don't want to keep doing what I'm doing. I want to move on. And he was like, well, you need a mentor. I said, well, can you mentor me? I don't know what else to do. Right. You're not, you know. And he was like, let's do it. And so ever since then, he taught me wow. what I needed to know. Wow. And it just took those mm -hmm. no's to get this shit. Mm -hmm. So it's just like what you said with the 409. He, four, oh, 408 times, don't change who you are. Mm -hmm. Don't let that change you. Now, if you do need to make some changes to get right, better, right, to right. better yourself, mm -hmm. then you do that. And it's just like with my role, it's some things I needed to learn mm -hmm. in Absolutely. order to be in a better position to be for the role to be mine. Mm -hmm. Just think about your job. Think about what you had to learn. Think about mm -hmm. what you wow. had to go through. You know, you know, you know, you've retired, but you're yeah. still working with the kids. You're still doing your thing. Yes. But we all get rejected, and it's okay to be rejected. But you can't stop at that rejection. You can't live there. So let's talk about some healthy ways to combat rejection. So, first of all, you can take a step back and practice some self care. So that's true. Somebody rejects you, don't live in that. Okay, wait a minute. Okay, cool. But. Let me take care of me. Let me fix this inside thing. Because we know if this ain't right, then it, this ain't gonna be right. right. I mean, it starts up here, but if this ain't right, you gotta mm -hmm. fix this. You know, you take care of yourself, love on yourself, spend some time with yourself. But I think a key with that is too, when talking about relationships, I think you have to be careful to, if somebody rejects you, to make sure there wasn't the validity to that rejection. That too. You know, because I think okay. we get very okay. caught up in, like, oh, okay. he rejected me, she rejected me. But why? You know, right. but honestly, was there a valid reason? There you go. If it was reversed, Ouch. I would have rejected you too. Yep. You know, so you might need to not only do self care and self reflection. There you go. Wow. You know, because you could be toxic from three relationships yeah, ago. Absolutely. That's why they rejected you. Good point. Oh. Yeah. Good point. <laughs> See? Wow. That's why we that's <laughs> right. why we and have <laughs> guests. Happen. That's right. And have guests. So that's Absolutely. a different perspective. And yes. that is so true. You do need to do self reflection. Yeah. You do. That's important. Wow. Thank you, Kim. All right. <laughs> now. Take some time to process your emotions. Now we all need to do it. Yeah. You know, because sometimes we look at and then when you say process yeah. your emotion, what could you have done differently? Even in that state, what did you do? You know, I, I think about sometimes when I argue or have an argument or a disagreement with somebody that I care about. You know, and I'm uh, I can't believe they talk to me like that. I can't believe they do. But mm -hmm. the old I've getting, okay. I've old I've gotten, mm -hmm. I've learned to like, okay, so Derek, what could you have done different? That, 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 did you really have to say this? Did you have really have to do this? How you know, because one thing you can't do is control what people say to you, mm -hmm. but you can't control what you what how you respond. Mm -hmm. So you're not in control of how people treat you, if they reject you, but you can control how you respond. So mm -hmm. it's all about how you respond to situations. So so process your emotions. 
uh, practice self affirmation. Uh, and pro- and, and I'm gonna add this practice self reflection. So we'll add that to what Kim said because you do have to look inward. We do have to look inward to see, okay, it was that rejection valid? That is a very good point. I'm just stuck on that. I'm really good. I'm just, and we really have to practice that because we don't know, we, we don't know what, sometimes we don't know how we respond to other people. We, we know how we should respond, but we don't know how in certain instances, because my, th- my faith, you talking about how they receive it? What are you saying? Well, how they receive it. Okay. How they receive it. Because you look, and I think, man, when I say self-reflection and uh, self-affirmation, practice self-affirmation, so that's that's clear. You understand to practice self-affirmation. Mm-hmm. When I add the point self-reflection, sometimes you got to think about how you respond to people. And I think, like, my faces are a big thing. So, like, I wear, I won't say I wear my feelings on my sleeve. That's not the, the term. But it's hard for me to control my face. So if something bothers me or something happens, a different thing, my face tends to, you know, I can't, I've been like, I've been like getting whooping since I was little for that. But uh, <laughs> my lips out. It's, it's just something that I just wear on my face. So sometimes you have to also watch, just watch. It's just self-reflection. Watch how you respond. Watch what you do. And I like what Kim added to this because we also play a part in that play. Think about the part you play in the rejection. You know, if that's the case. And then sometimes people just don't like you. I'm just, mm-hmm. I'm not for everybody. Mm-hmm. And everybody's not for me. So that's it. Um, spend time with people you love. So that's kind of cool, even though we ain't got together in a while. We right. Together, but, no, no. You know, you we miss that, uh, those relationships. You know, sometimes when you reject it, you feel alone. It's easy for you to constantly nurse that behavior and can feel bad for yourself. But then when you got people around that love you, you tend to forget about that. You tend to forget about the situation. You tend to think more on the people and focus on what's in the now. So, you know, so we need to hook up with something. You know, right. so soul food so you yeah. can make some corn. Right. Because it's, it's a del- delicate vegetable. <laughs> yes. It's a delicate vegetable. <laughs> and it's the only one she knows how to make. So. <laughs> but she makes it in multiple ways. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, one thing the pastor says, and he's been saying it since we've been in COVID, and I don't know if everybody kind of caught on to that, but he says it at the end of every sermon while when he prays, he says, you know, be kind to others, but also remember to be kind to yourself love others but also remember to love yourself this next point says remember to be kind to yourself give yourself some grace you know even though you might have to self-reflect even though you believe in self-affirmation even though people might reject you be kind to yourself you know still love yourself love yourself through whatever situation you face whatever turmoil you go through because nobody's gonna love you like you so love yourself i feel like sometimes i cut myself too much slack no, I didn't, I mean, it's okay, Lisa. You're all right. I need a little tough love to myself too, sometimes. Yeah. Well, I mean, I I can understand that, but yeah. I think sometimes you you still do have to make sure that you have that good relationship with yourself because a lot of people, like you say, you cut too much slack, which I've never heard that before, but I can see you mm-hmm. saying that. But mm-hmm. I know some instances I am so hard on myself. If I don't do something right, and I think back on something that I did that I could have said differently, it were just anything. I just told a friend, you know, I'm saying, Terry, why you say that? That was not, that was not a good idea. Sometimes I'm a little hard on myself than I should be. But no, I've never heard just, you cut yourself too much slack. Oh, yeah. I think I understand what she's saying. I, I because, what she's saying. You know, because going back to my, the, one of the points I said at the beginning, you know, like if, when you reject, you know, positive medical advice, you know, yeah, you know, true. there are some things in for your health, mental health, physical health that you know you need to do and you just keep projecting it. You do need to get some tough love to yourself and say, look, yeah. get the, you know, get, get it together. together. Get it Tripping. together. You get know? that shot. Get that vaccination. <laughs> right. Get it, get it together. Mm-hmm. Get over yourself. So let's see what the word says. Um, so um, Romans 8, 37, 39 <laughs> says, no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who love us. For I am convinced that there are neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. That is Christ Jesus, our Lord. Um, So whatever it is, whatever it is, don't let nothing stop you. They keep the main thing, the main thing, which is Christ. So if somebody rejects you, they reject you. If yeah. you reject somebody, you reject them. If you don't do what you're supposed to do, but don't let nothing separate you from the love of Jesus Christ. Um, 
Also, one of the points that I wanted to uh, go to is engage in healthy habits. You know, uh, take care of yourself. Uh, don't let that rejection just stop you. And, uh, you know, and then, you know, if you reject somebody and you realize that that's something you probably should have did, apologize. Absolutely. Go back. Fix that. Absolutely. You know, is it, it's, we're Christians. Right. We, we're supposed mm-hmm. to be saved and we're supposed to do things right. But we don't, we're human. Exactly. And exactly. we make mistakes. So if you wrong somebody or if you, you rejected them and you probably shouldn't, maybe you had a bad day. Mm-hmm. Maybe somebody called you and had the best intentions right. in the world, but you weren't in the best mood. So you mm-hmm. said something, they felt rejected, mm-hmm. and you think about that later. And if you feel that, then you go back and apologize. Mm-hmm. Fix that. You know, we have a place too, you know. And be receiving if somebody asks your forgiveness. Absolutely. Sometimes we just won't stay mad. Uh-huh, right. <laughs> but also be ready if they never say I'm sorry. Because one of the hardest things you have to do is forgive somebody who never says I'm sorry. Yep. So you might be rejected by somebody okay. who's never going to yep. say I'm sorry, could care less to say I'm sorry. And you got to be willing to work through Absolutely. that as well. And you are right again, Minister Kim. Exactly. Forgiveness is exactly. key. Yes, because it is. forgiveness yes, is not it is. for them. No, for exactly. That's what I'm saying. Sometimes you got to be willing to do it. Absolutely. And they never not going to say the word. Absolutely. Kim will be back. She will. Yeah, she will be back. The word right there. Right she on it. Hey. Right. Okay, Kim. Like she's my best thing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, and then number one, I mean, just in the end, just don't let rejection stop you. You know, just know that if you're not, if you're not for somebody, you will find somebody that's for okay. you. If uh, if you don't have a friendship or some friend that you want to be friends with, it might be the reason why they don't want to mm-hmm. be friends with you. Or maybe it's the reason why you shouldn't be friends with them. So mm-hmm. just stop mm-hmm. looking at it negatively. It, it don't have yeah. to be. One thing that also was a quote that I saw, if you're rejected, accept. Mm-hmm. If you feel unloved, let go. If they choose someone over something or, or something over you, move on. Remember that in every no from someone is a yes to someone better. Wow. And you think about that. Because wow. I know it's been a lot of situations, relationships, friendships. I want to be friends with somebody. I'm cool with somebody. And then you find out, oh, that ain't even what I thought it was going to mm-hmm. be. And then mm-hmm. you move on, find somebody that's cooler. And right. it is. And then relationship-wise, we ain't got to talk about that. Okay. <laughs> Some relationships I've had have just been horrible. And it's just like now it's just it's better because but I think it's because we get better. Yeah. And we should I think it's we get better. Our standards change. Mm -hmm. And you know, we we expect more. Or either we expect something different. We see what we were in Mm -hmm. and we didn't like it and it didn't feel good and then you see something different and you just move on. And I think something out of that, not even geared toward relationships, but you think about this pandemic. I watched a video for work. And they were talking about how the whole scope of the workforce has changed oh, yeah. because of COVID. You have companies that insisted that employees had to be in the in office. The yeah. There's no way they could be right. home based mm-hmm. because of productivity. And COVID has taught us, no, people can work from mm-hmm. home. People are going to want higher wages. Yeah. If you don't mm-hmm. give the employee what they want, they will leave and go start their own businesses yeah. and things like that. So you think about the rejection in the workforce that yep. people felt during That's the pandemic true. and how that flourished into new businesses, yeah. the way corporations function. So yeah, and new terms. Can, yeah, we got hybrid, mm-hmm. hybrid, oh, yeah. and yeah. Yeah. it was never. We be a hybrid church. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. some people on campus, exactly. some people worship at home. Yeah, you know, and it, it just the pandemic yeah. has changed a lot. Yeah, yeah. It, it changed, and it, that's a form of yeah. rejection, rejection. But it made us better mm-hmm. in some senses. And one more little airplane thing. Uh, the pastor <laughs> used to say, has to, well, up in the air. Yeah. But, you know, when the football game is going on down here mm-hmm. and the assistant coach or whatever is up here, mm-hmm. we can only see when you're in the game what's mm-hmm. right here. But the assistant coach can see down further, a few yards, which God mm-hmm. can see where you are. He knows Absolutely. where you are and he knows what's to come. Mm-hmm. So that's why you've got to be willing mm-hmm. to open up, let yourself go. That's it. Mm-hmm. You got to. Mm-hmm. So, I thank you so much for watching this episode of Let's Rap. I cannot thank Kimberly enough. Kim, you'll be back. <laughs> yeah. Kim, Kim. Kim. Oh, okay. Kim. And see, it's well, thank like. you for having me. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> we will have you again. So that's what I like about Let's Rap, number one, because we all have different opinions. But when you're friends and you're amongst friends and loving people and people who love you. Friends who are family. And friends who are family. family. And we can have conversations in love. Mm-hmm. And people's best interest. Mm-hmm. And then you can hear a different point of view. Because she has definitely changed my yes. point of view. I was going somewhere else with this and she took it somewhere yeah. else. Thank so you, thank Lord. You for that, yeah. appreciate and you how we've had, can have rejection in a relationship. Absolutely. Because we've had rejection oh, yeah. over the years. And Absolutely. Ne- but I never thought we'd never be thought. where we never are thought. now. 
Yeah, no, so. she sure brought me Tahitian treats every time. I need them. <laughs> so I appreciate that. But we thank you for joining this episode of Let's Wrap. We will end with a, a word of prayer. And thank you, Lisa, for everything, I'll for wait, just being here as usual. Shout out to Ebony. And let us pray. Father God, thank you for this day. Thank you for blessing us. And God, thank you, number one. When we do feel rejection, we can always come to you because you never yeah. reject us. Thank you. No matter how low we are, thank no matter you, what Lord. we've done wrong, no matter in what situation you, we find ourselves in, you will yeah. always love us and never yes. reject us. So even in our hearts, when we feel rejected, we feel despondent, we feel like we can't make yes. it, let us come. To the rock who That's is higher me. than I and we trust you God we, we thank you, you on today thank you for you, Kim Lord. and being with thank us today you, and thank we thank you, you for Lisa and God everything bless. we ask that you yes. a special blessing yes. on Ebony that she continues God. to uh, work in school bless and do what God. she needs to do to move forward to be what it is that you would have yes. her be God thank you for thank you, God. this platform Praise thank you for our Jesus. pastor thank you for bless this church thank you for all that you've done and all that you continue to do in Christ Jesus name will be forever careful to give your name all the glory all the honor and all the praise that you are more than due. Amen. Amen, amen and amen. amen. Thank you for joining us, Ralph. We're out. <laughs>